Now, shaitan is our eternal enemy. So, the first thing shaitan does is, he prevents us from coming towards deen. This is the important point that I would like to bring forth to everybody. This is the first plan of shaitan. Plan number one, a person should not accept iman. A person should not believe. So that he may go in Jahannam forever and ever. That is plan number one. But Zaid, Amar, Bakar, they have insisted, they have overcome this problem and they have accepted iman. So plan number two. Plan number e to make, is to make sure that they do not carry out the do's of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they disobey Allah and they do not, not abstain from the don'ts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so again they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is plan number two. That they should not become religious at all. They should not perform salat. They should not fast in the month of Ramadan. They should not give zakat. They should not perform hajj. They should violate the rights of their parents. They should consume alcohol. They should consume drugs, fornicate, engage in adultery, lie, backbite. This is the second plan. And if a person remains adamant that no, I am a mumin, and a mumin is supposed to stay away from everything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so I will not follow the instructions of shaitan and I will become a religious person. I want to remain religious. So plan number three. Plan number three is that shaitan will make certain well-known commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala easy for this person. So he will be able to perform five times salad regularly. No obstruction. Perform five times salad regularly. He will be able to engage in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very easily. So he is reciting a thousand times Durush Sharif every day. A thousand times third Kalima daily. A thousand times Kalima Tayyiba daily. And this Zikra is increasing year by year. And now this Salat is also increasing. Before it was only Fard, Wajib, Sunnah Muakkada. Now Sunnah Ghair Muakkada. And then Nawafil. And after Nawafil, Tahajjud, Ishraq, Salatu Duha, Chasht, Awabin. Spending in good causes. So, so those amal that are seen to be good amal, that makes a person look religious. Shaitan engages this person into such amal and he makes him neglect so many other commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And keeps him intoxicated with the amal that he is carrying out. And he feels that I am religious. Whereas if he was to assess his life, take stock of his life and look very carefully at his 24 hours, then he would come to this conclusion that there is only 10% religion in my life. Whilst he is assuming that he is 90% religious, he is 95% religious. Whereas he is only 10% religious, 15% religious, 20% religious. And shaitan intoxicates this person with this 20% of deen. And he is only being able to carry out this 20% of deen because shaitan is letting him carry out this 20% of deen. And as a result, when he is resurrected on the day of Qiyamah, what we will see is that in his book of deeds, there are heaps of sins. And the good amal that he was intoxicated with are insignificant in comparison to the heaps of evil deeds that he has brought. يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْذَرًا وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that on the day of Qiyamah, when the soul will see, when each soul will see, مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْذَرًا وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ All the good that he had, he had carried out in the world, and all the evil that he had carried out in the world, when he will see both things, 
تَوَدُّلَوْ أَنَّ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَهُ أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا Then he will wish that there was a long distance between himself and the day of Qiyamah. He will wish that, he will wish that he was far away from Qiyamah. Why? Why would he wish this way? When he is seeing the good deeds and the bad deeds. Why would he wish that there was a long distance between himself and the day of Qiyamah? Because the bad deeds will far outweigh the good deeds. And he will be able to see his doom and destruction. So my appeal to all my friends who are sitting here in this gathering today is that whatever good that we are doing, I am not saying they are useless. I am not saying they are useless. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows which deed will become a means of our salvation on the day of Qiyamah. Sometimes only one deed is sufficient. He will look at the principle. That the principle is, the law is that he should have been punished. He was lucky, I may not be lucky. So all the good deeds that we are doing, even if it is as significant as just performing Thurakat Nafl, we should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should carry on with those good deeds. Because good deeds takes a person to other good deeds. And slowly, slowly a person's life becomes very religious. The point I'm trying to emphasize is that let us not live a life of neglect. No, we, we have to x-ray ourselves. We have to put our spiritual life into a city scan into MRI scan. And we have to know where we stand. And how can we do that? On a daily basis, take out 5 to 7 minutes, or at least on a weekly basis, and look at the good side of your life and the bad side of your life. For Akhirat, we have to do this, my friends. It's for ourselves, not for anybody else. Can we not take out 10 minutes per week for our Akhirat? Can I not take out 10 minutes... For my akhirat, not for anybody else's akhirat. Some of us are 60, some of us are 70, some of us have reached the age of 80, some of us are in our 50s, 40s. For how long more do we expect to live? 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? And even those who are in their teens and 20s, my friends, life, death does not discriminate between young and old. People pass away at the age of 30, at the age of 25, at the age of 20, at the age of 18, at the age of 19. Some people are fortunate that they pass away in a good state and some people are unfortunate that they pass away disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am your friend, I am your well-wisher. And this is the reason why I am appealing to you. First and foremost, I am also in need of these advices. So whenever I speak, I always advise myself first. And whilst advising myself, I advise my friends also. I am your well-wisher. It is my desire that I myself can somehow come out of the clutches of nafs and shaitan and become a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, become the lover of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, become the ashik of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when I depart, I can depart smilingly. And it is my same desire for each and every Muslim brother and Muslim sister. And it is my desire for every non-Muslim brother and non-Muslim sister. So please don't take this as a lecture or as a bayan. And Alhamdulillah, we've listened to the bayan. We've acquired the sawab for listening to the bayan for half an hour. No. Go from here with a resolution. That inshallah we will bring a positive change in our lives. And that change is, make a notebook, write down the negatives of life. Every person should have a small notebook in your mobile. Negative points in my life. Number one, I get very angry. And, and when I'm angry, I don't know what I'm saying to my wife, my children. They love me so much, I hurt them. Anger, anger is in me. Jealousy is in me. Whenever I see a Muslim brother with some ni'mat, with some blessing, I dislike it. I want that ni'mat to be taken away from him. 
My problem is lustful gazes. Alhamdulillah, I go to the masjid for Zohar, Asar, Maghrib, Salah, but Fajr is my problem. These problems have been in our life for the past 20 years. And we have made no effort to resolve these issues. This is, this is the worrying thing. This is the worrying thing, that there is no effort to resolve these issues. There is no effort to solve these problems. We don't take these problems as problems. What will happen to us when we will depart from this world? What will happen to us when people will leave us in the grave and walk away? 